Hi everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to meet Jayoka, a baby snakeling and a prominent character from Dolphin Star Studios. I know you're going to love this one, so sit back, relax and enjoy. Species? Koadagoo snake. Sex? Male? Age? Five months. That's eight years old in snake years. Length? 16 inches. Description. Black and indigo iridescent dorsal scales and a milk white belly and Prussian blue eyes. Siblings? Jayoka was one of 24 snakelings born to the same mother. All but him were instantly put to death. Home? A forest called Vaku. Jayoka is a character from the story novel Underwing, which is the first of a series called Tales of the Kuadagu. Jayoka's life began with a tragedy. He lost his family in an attack by three raccoons. His parents and all of his siblings were killed. He fled for his life and survived, though he was terribly frightened. Other animals of the forest quickly found him and took him into their care, but he was afraid of them to start with. Much of the help the animals offered him was either rebuked with a nip or accepted with distrust and suspicion. In time, he would come to accept their kindness, but at this very young stage in life, he understood too little of the world to make sense of everything that had happened, and could do nothing but try to protect himself. The forest animals understood this, however, and they persisted. The first of the animals to take him in was a family of wolves. Their leader's name was Ortimus. They watched over him as the animals of Vaku decided what they were going to do with the baby snake. Jayoka didn't stay for long because as a snake, he had been mobile from the moment he had hatched out of the egg. Lang, the leader of Vaku, charged the animals not to outcast Jayoka. All of the animals understood that Jayoka would continue to be a target just as his family had been, and as such he represented a threat to them. But Lang insisted that they would treat Jayoka not as a liability, but as a treasure to be loved and nurtured. He understood that those who had hunted Jayoka had done so for a reason. And although he didn't yet know what that reason was, he recognised that there was something special about Jayoka that he was sought after so much. Jayoka knew nothing of this decree or the reasons for it. How could he? It was just a newborn snakeling. With patience from the animals, including with his nipping, although he never managed to bite anybody hard, he came to recognise that they meant him no harm and allowed himself to relax around them. Because he could relax, he realised that he could let his guard down and play. The animals who had become his surrogate parents offered him various food to eat. And Jayoka came to love tree fruit. He liked to explore. He also liked to play, particularly pranks, tricks and stunts. But these were all innocent in nature and just for fun without doing harm. He had picked up on the ethos to do no harm that the animals of Vaku lived by and came to embody that value of harmlessness himself. With all of that said, Jayoka liked to feel capable However kind, caring and supportive the forest animals had been to him, he never forgot the visceral sense of fear he had felt for his life at the moment of his birth and sought to distract himself from the ghost of his fearful feelings. During the first few months of his life, Jayuka became aware of the existence of the leaders of the community of Vaku and about the culture of Vaku itself. He met Frin and Nadir, Ramosi the wood rat, and of course, he already knew Ultimus the wolf. Through them, he learned about Lang the Grey Hawk. 
They taught him that when he met another creature of Vaku, he was to address them as Friend Stag, Friend Wood Rat, and so on. Lang, however, always remained simply Lang, and the reason for this remained a puzzle to Jayoka. As he grew more physically capable and in better control of his young body, Jayoka explored beyond the bounds of Hortimus's cave and made friends with denizens of the forest beyond the small group of animals who were raising him. The animals of Vaku were generally playful as a result of the communion, but at first, the new friends he found were reluctant to include him in their games. They believed that because he had no legs, he would be too slow to keep up. He proved them very wrong, and himself very quick. The other animals were impressed with his abilities, but he felt uncomfortable with this. He did not like scrutiny, even if it was favourable. And yet, he was exceptionally fast and playful, and that, along with his being a Kawadagu, a highly unusual species in this part of the forest, tended to earn him an audience. Jayoka didn't want an audience, he wanted a community, and he wanted friends. As a result of this, Jayoka slowly began to feel disconnected from the rest of the forest animals. This was for two reasons. The other animals' eagerness to watch him when he played gradually put him off being his true self around them. The other reason for this was his uniqueness as a Kawadagu in Vaku. There were no others like him, and as he began to explore the world beyond his surrogate family and seek friendship in the undergrowth and branches beyond, he came to realise that there were no other Kawadagu around. He felt this sense of isolation with the other reptiles too, even the other snakes. They, in particular, seemed to find his presence a nuisance, so in time he became discouraged from seeking their company. In time, Jayoka came to wish that he was somebody else, so that he didn't have this unwelcome sense of uniqueness. But of course, that was impossible. One day, while exploring the edge of Vaku, Jayoka met a cobra. The cobra, a snake that eats other snakes, chased Jayoka, but the little snake escaped. That was not the only other snake Jayoka met. On another day, another snake appeared in his life, but this one played a prank on him. When he confronted this other snake, he was delighted to find that she too was a Kawadagu. Her name was Amea. He finally felt the kinship he had been pining for for so long. He felt understood. And he also found an outlet for his need to understand another. He and Amea became inseparable. A while after Jayoka had escaped the cobra, he encountered it again, this time deep within Vaku. At first he was afraid, but the cobra explained that he had nothing to fear. Thanks to the communion, the cobra no longer had any desire to eat him. Instead, the bigger snake introduced himself as Loth. Loth explained that Jayoka had become an inspiration to him and told him, your name makes me young. It gives me life. It liberates me. From then on, Jayoka and Loth coexisted in peace. Getting to know a mayor opened a dam of new information and questions for Jayoka. They talked together and discovered that neither of them really knew where they had come from, beyond the knowledge that they had once both had parents. Other than that, their origins were a mystery. They shared a feeling of being unsure of what they were supposed to do with their lives. The other animals of the forest had suggested, explicitly and implicitly, that as snakes, all they were expected to do was eat, sleep, and bask in the sun. While this seemed well-intentioned, both Jayoka and Amea felt that this was not enough. That there was more that they could, and should, do with their lives and that the expectation that that was all they could do denied their full potential and relegated them to a place that felt irrelevant and lonely. Both Kawadagu felt that they could contribute more than that. 
For Jayoka's part, his acrobatics and athletics were not the contribution that suited him to give. And yet, he could not articulate what he did want to contribute. He was still unsure of this when he and Amea became aware that there was more to them as Koadagu, and that there was something troubling about their origins. They became aware that the guardians of the forest, among them Lang, Otimis, and Frinan, knew parts of the story and had kept it a secret. When Jayoka sought the truth from them, he learned that the Koadagu were the target of a hunt by a legion of animals loyal to Zarid, a beast who claimed to surpass all life on Earth, even humans, and was said to wield terrible powers. Zarid's army, he learned, would be prepared to destroy Vaku in their hunt for the Koadagu hiding within. Jayoka came to believe that he was a curse on his community. The guardians of the forest and Amea tried to encourage him in the belief that he was a blessing, not a curse. But Jayoka could not find it in himself to believe this. And then, in the midst of all this, Jayoka was approached by Loth. Ever since his epiphany in Vaku, the cobra had felt a special reverence for the little snakeling. Loth told him that there would always be those who hated him, but they did not have the power to decide Jayoka's worth. Loth acknowledged that Jayoka had not identified what he wanted to do with his life, but it was nevertheless important for Jayoka to maintain devout about his self-respect. He warned Jayoka that the world could be unjust and unfair, but that Jayoka should not let himself be hindered by that unfairness. Listening to this, Jayoka felt that Loth was offering him nothing. No answers about Jayoka's purpose, nor about how to resolve the threat of the Legion. He rebuked Loth in anger. Jayoka had already heard much about others' impressions of him, and he would hear more as he went about his life's journey. A tug-of-war of positivity from his allies, and negativity from his foes. And yet, his impression of himself alone was the key to his identity. Even this would not be enough. Whatever Jayoka regarded himself as, it would be his actions his choices, that would ultimately define him. The sequel to Underwing is titled Netherlife and is expected to be released in the near future. If you enjoyed this character profile, please hit like and subscribe and be sure to share this video around. I'd like to say thank you to Loren John Presley for this commission and for providing the artwork for this video. Thank you also to my Patreon supporters. I make a lot more written profiles than videos, so if you want to see those and get early access to them, be sure to pledge. That's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.